Howdy. Archaeologists discover biblical war related to Earth's magnetic field. Report. Geomagnetic, geomagnetic dating has supported biblical accounts of military operations against the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. The discussion has previously centered on the analysis of ceramics and more recently radiocarbon dating. A breakthrough archaeological method that relies on recreating the Earth's geomagnetic field from several historical periods thousands of years ago has been used to confirm a biblical narrative of an ancient Egyptian military assault against Israel. According to a report of, from Newsweek, there are some other Old Testament descriptions of Aramean, Assyrian and Babylonian military operations against the kingdoms of Israel and Judah that were also supported by the research. Published in the journal PNAS, Proceeding of the National Academy of Sciences of the USA. As quoted by Newsweek, Yoav Wagnin, a researcher from Tel Aviv University who is the lead author of the interdisciplinary study based on this, his doctoral thesis, told the outlet that these studies sought to clarify events mentioned in the Hebrew Bible, a topic of intense discussion among experts. This debate is relevant to discussions regarding the history of the biblical text, Mr. Wagnin told Newsweek. The discussion has previously centered on the analysis of ceramics and more recently radiocarbon dating. According to Mr. Wagnin, radiocarbon is quite restricted and does not allow for high resolution dating from around 800 BC to 400 BC. We wanted to introduce another chronological tool to help solve this debate. It is very important for the study of events that took place after 800 BC. For earlier periods, it is a complementary tool to radiocarbon. Together, they enable more precise dating, he further said. The methodology of this study revolves around reconstructing the historical geomagnetic fields from the burned remnants of ancient Israelite settlements. Researchers have been able to connect archaeological environments to certain military operations described in biblical narratives with the help of this data, the outlet further said. Mr. Wagner also said that they have sampled mainly sun-dried mud bricks which had been burned when ancient cities were set on fire. According to Newsweek, the ancient geomagnetic field's direction and strength can be determined by sampling the bricks in their original location, which allowed the worldwide study team to do so. Hmm. Some months ago I made this video. Not even the Holy Bible contradicts with the mountain water theory. No shrub had yet appeared on the earth and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed it into his nostrils, the breath of life. And man became a living being. And there is like other stories also in the Bible about uh, the crying mountains and the water from the grounds coming forth. In other words, they know, they knew already then, because probably they have witnessed it, 
how all of a sudden there can be a lot of water coming out of the ground, especially like springs. You know, for many centuries, many springs, they just either they continued on the same pace as they were putting out water. Every now and then there was a slight fluctuation in it. And maybe due to thousands of earthquakes in those many years, we are talking about thousands of years, or at least hundreds of years, like a small earthquake can make whatever well stop putting water out because it gets, you know, plucked. It's, I think, totally possible. Um, it can be also the other way around. If the electromagnetic environment of Earth changes to a certain extent, the water stored within the crust, which I see as a sphere, as is our atmosphere made of many spheres where we have water, we have clouds in different heights. So we will have water in different depths. And if there is a fluctuation in the input into Earth's electric circuitry, the spheres, they will either shrink or expand. If, for example, the water sphere within Earth's crust, probably it has a real name. Hydrosphere? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe much more complicated. If it shrinks, groundwater levels will sink. They go down, as I experienced here in Eastern Finland. They are lowering, as they are lowering in many other places on Earth. In some other places, they aren't lowering. For reasons, because there is rain. But if there is rain, there is a straight connection from the heavens to the Earth. Because there is rain. There is a connection between the cloud and the ground. Rain can fall in different velocities. It depends on the charge differential between the heavens and the ground. If it's really, really foggy, or I don't know how you call this rain in English when it's just like, when there are like, really, really small droplets of water just in the air and you go outside, you don't really see that it's raining, but you're instantly wet. Then you probably are in a cloud. Then you can probably think that, yeah, actually, you are in heaven. Because the heaven came down, you are in the cloud. So the atmosphere actually came down to the surface of the earth. And if the weather changes, it will recede back up. And you can see again the clouds in the sky as they pass by. And it's very interesting. Let me show you just one thing about springs and timelines. I had to search for some time. I have no idea where I have been before, but anyway. Obladis place in the municipality of Ladis, Tyrol in Austria. Obladis is a place in the upper Inn Valley, which is a river in Tyrol and belongs to the municipality of Ladis in the district of Landeck. The place has been known since the Middle Ages for its medicinal sulfur and acid springs. 
According to an old tradition, the shepherd Niklaus Schederle discovered the Sauerbrunn Quelle mineral spring with a natural carbon dioxide content in 1212, which is why that nickel fountain was called Nickel zu Niklaus. People used this healing spring for all diseases. Emperor Max had examined, had it examined, and his doctor called it one of the older hail semists of all Germany. Later investigations also came to the conclusion that this Sauerbrunn was among all the mildest, loveliest, and most witty and most powerful. Since the late Middle Ages, the place was a spa. Since the spring was sovereign grounds, on sovereign grounds, it was directly subordinate to the Hofkammer to Innsbruck. Because the sulfur springs enable spa treatments, tourism developed in Ladiso Bladis very early on. Princes, emperors and thousands of guests use it for drinking cures. As early as the early modern period, the water was also bottled and sold in sealed bottles, documented, for example, for the sovereigns Ferdinand II, Claudia Leopold V. Originally, whaling up to a meter high, in other sources it was much higher. There were many meters. So this is what I that was I was searching for, but now it's just a meter. But anyway, originally whaling up to a meter high. The source probably poured only a few centimeters high since the Intel earthquake on the 9th of July 17th, 1670. At the end of the 18th century, the visit had almost came to come to a standstill. In 18. 33, the source was auctioned off and, with government requirements, a large spa hotel was built. This was run by the Acidulus Water Company, Obladis. From this time on, the spa and medicinal scent water was business flourished again. Yeah, mountain water. We are in the Alps. So let's check it out. We are deep in the Alps. Now it's approximately north where it should be. Let's have a quick look at the pictures. The water gate. <laughs> yeah. Keep it clean. Serfaus. Bike park. Yeah, this must be fun running there. I don't know where exactly the spring is. It's somewhere here, I guess. Has to be. Serfhauser Sause. This might be the water thing. Adventure sport, no. Murmli Wasser. Yeah, I cannot click on that. Check it out. But here it says water. Six senses. 
Yeah, that's a bath, I guess. Maybe. Could be. We have a lake. I don't know. But anyway, white sediments. Let's go back to the valley. And I would call the Inn River also a white river. Yes, very nice. Chipsum containing water. Yeah, I could spend a weekend there fishing and biking. No problem. Maybe every now and then wash a stone or something. <laughs> Maria Stein. But in. Yeah, there is so much stuff in the Alps, you have no idea. This could be continued forever. But it's a pity I couldn't find now this well here. Serfaus must be somewhere here. Serfaus fis ladis. Sunstone. But anyway. We have a witch path. Doesn't work either, so I leave it here. Thanks. Bye.